Now, I think one of the smartest and most impressive things that the MCU has done, one of the reasons why it has endured for roughly 15 years at this point, is that they, the creative minds behind it, like Kevin Feige, they've gone out of their way to, for the most part, give all the movies and shows a different and unique tone or feel, as well as to put them into what you could call different subgenres and given them all different levels of stakes and seriousness. In other words, sure, they all have a very similar formula. When you strip everything else away, they all have a superhero or heroes fighting villains or trying to stop some type of threat and succeeding in the end almost every single time, other than Infinity War, and I dare say the defeat at the end of that movie is one of the reasons why many regard it as one of the best films in the MCU. Anyway, they all feel like superhero films to some degree, of course, but at least they don't feel like the exact same thing each and every time over and over again. For example, sometimes they focus more on fantastic elements and more fun, like Thor Ragnarok, while other times they're more serious and grounded, like a Captain America Winter Soldier. And yet, despite these variations in style, they've all felt like they were in the same universe, that there is a through line connecting all of it. And the average MCU fan can, and oftentimes does, enjoy pretty much whatever the next show or movie ends up being, because they usually also have some level of universal appeal. They're not radically different from each other, and the target audience is essentially anyone who wants to enjoy a superhero story set in a now well-established universe. However, one MCU show quite a few fans have not been enjoying so much has been She-Hulk. In fact, of all the MCU projects thus far, this one seems to be getting maybe the most, shall we say, negative reaction ever. Though yes, there are certainly others in the past that have gotten a good degree of backlash as well. And yeah, probably more so than She-Hulk. And that isn't to say She-Hulk doesn't have its fans. Certainly it does, and if you're one of them, that's great. Glad you're enjoying it. I truly am. I don't see the point in harboring ill will towards someone who likes a show or movie that I don't, and vice versa. I don't get being upset at someone who doesn't like something I do. It's almost like with roughly 8 billion people on the planet, we're not always going to agree to a person on what good entertainment is. Either way, and to be fair, in large part I'd say because of the negative reaction to She-Hulk from some, I've seen a lot of people stepping up to vigorously defend the show. I've even had plenty of people mad at me and my wife for giving it um less than glowing reviews over on my second channel, where we've been reviewing each episode. And these defenders of it will often say anything from, it's meant to be more of a fun sitcom style show, one that doesn't take itself as seriously as other MCU content does, to others defending it by going with the rather tried and true classic defense at this point, the it simply wasn't made for you, so just move on already and let those who are enjoying it enjoy it. And again, that's fine if you're one of the people enjoying it. But the big problem with the latter defense, the it's not made for you one, is that, well, a lot of people love the interconnectivity of the MCU, so much so that they're going to watch literally everything set within it, that you could even argue the MCU has been sold and become as popular as it has because of this very feature. That when I watch one show or movie, it more often than not has bearing an impact on other shows and movies. You could even say it feels like one giant story. Meaning if I want to be on top of everything, if I want to understand the scope and scale of the full story, the massive overarching story that is the MCU, one of its greatest appeals, I do have to watch She-Hulk, and thus it is intended for me. And yes, there very much has been things tied into other parts of the past and future of the MCU in She-Hulk. It's not completely independent, or as independent as it possibly can be, from the rest of the MCU. It is not 100% standalone. I mean, if they, Marvel, had just come out and flat out said this is just a one-off, that it won't have anything to do with or any bearing on any other shows or movies and other known characters, that this is just meant to be its own fun thing, well then, okay, maybe an argument could be made that MCU fans who don't like it should be less vocal to just leave the thing alone. But of course, Marvel would never ever do anything like that, because again, it's a selling point, right, to be interconnected, and a lot of people, a lot of MCU fans, would be less likely to watch it if they knew ahead of time this wasn't going to have anything to do or any bearing on anything else. And instead of doing that, instead of letting people know ahead of time it's going to be its own thing, enjoyed for enjoyment's sake alone, which is what those who enjoy it say it should be and is, they've gone the opposite route with it. They've pretty much turned it into a cameo of the week type show. The main character, She-Hulk, who breaks the fourth wall in the show and has done that in the comics, 
has even joked about this very thing, that it isn't or shouldn't be considered that because she says so, despite multiple characters from elsewhere already showing up, and with others that haven't shown up yet being shown in trailers. Meaning, again, this is not something that they, Marvel, are saying or claiming can and does stand on its own two feet entirely. They're not saying it's something you can ignore and not watch or stop watching if you turn out not to like it, because they are making it part of the bigger story and essentially asking fans of those other characters, the ones promised to show up eventually, to watch as well. Meaning the show itself is trying to say it is for them. And this is actually one of the oldest tricks there is for comics. Oftentimes in actual comic books, popular and beloved characters will cross over into less known or less popular or newer books, and they'll be slapped on the cover to um, encourage fans of that popular character to pick up and buy a book they otherwise would have skipped, and then to hopefully enjoy that book so much that they put it on their pull list after the popular character is long gone. For example, you um, might, I don't know, put Daredevil on the cover of a She-Hulk comic to get fans of Daredevil to buy She-Hulk when they otherwise never would have, or to maybe watch her show when they might otherwise have skipped it, and then to save his appearance for the final episode or two in order to make sure his fans watch the whole thing, waiting for him. And look, I'm not saying they can't or shouldn't make shows or movies that are more fun or lighthearted in nature, that aren't more sitcom in style even, I guess or that are perhaps tailored more towards certain audiences, as long as they don't lose that broader appeal, I get wanting to ever increase your fan base and lure in as many different people from as many different walks of life as possible. I understand the push for diversity is a win-win for Hollywood. They not only get to look righteous, but they can attempt to broaden their viewership and make more money. And as a lifelong fan of Marvel, I'm all for as many people coming in and getting the same joy out of these stories and these characters that I have since, well, since I was a kid and picked up my first comic book. This isn't some type of veiled argument against any of that, and as someone who has indeed read comics their whole life, let me tell you, there are different styles and tones in comics. There are certainly books or issues that get full-on wacky, while others are very, very dark and serious and gritty. There's always been different styles in comics. And you could even say it's impressive that, especially lately, Marvel has been duplicating the feel of comic books in the MCU. And I say lately because, for better or worse, it didn't start out that way. It started out feeling much more grounded and realistic in the MCU. Like, the starting point was our real world, and then we started to sprinkle in superheroes here and there. Like, the MCU is just a divergent universe from our own. And even when the MCU in the earlier days got a little more fun and wacky with a movie, like with a Guardians of the Galaxy, for example, it never went too far or off the deep end. It still, by and large, took itself seriously and tried to be consistent with the rest of the MCU, and still felt at least somewhat realistic. Or at least realistic enough not to, shall we say, damage other parts of it, or to damage its overall integrity. Unfortunately, that has not been the case with She-Hulk. It gets so goofy and over-the-top at times that it feels more like a parody of the MCU than an actual part of it. It tries so hard to be funny, to make a joke, that it'll include things that make absolutely no sense in-universe to attempt to get people to laugh, or to, every so often, actually finally move the plot along. And in my opinion, She-Hulk is what happens when you know you've been milking the same formula for too long and the cracks are starting to show. When you realize just putting yet another superhero story into a different subgenre, or a similar one that you've done before, just isn't going to cut it anymore, it doesn't make it feel different enough anymore, especially when we're getting so many shows and so many movies per year now. And so you end up going way too far. You make something that is both connected to that bigger story, yet is pointless at the same time. You pull the curtain back and make people stop and ask themselves, why am I even watching this? Because a lot of them aren't enjoying it for what it is. They're only watching it to know what happens or because you promised Daredevil was going to show up. And more so than any other MCU show or movie before it, I'm getting asked about She-Hulk by people both online and in my day-to-day -day life. Do I need to watch this show or to keep watching it? Which is a really, really odd question when you stop and think about it and about the last thing that Marvel wants their fans to be asking, I think. Because you don't need to watch any of it. You're supposed to be watching simply because you enjoy it for what it is, not because you feel like you have to in order to keep up. Even if you've been keeping up for 15 years now, and even though, as I said before, the interconnectivity is one of the best or coolest features of the MCU, 
but it still has to have meaning. Problem is that overarching narrative once felt rather tight, and like one movie, even subtly, was leading directly into another, and then eventually, after a dozen films or so, it would culminate into an Avengers film. It felt like everything eventually paid off. Now there's so many shows and movies, so many smaller story threads running all over the place, so many characters, that it's starting to feel scattered-brained, and like some of these shows in the bigger picture are pretty useless, like they exist just to exist. Which, in a way, I do think they should be able to, right? If you're enjoying She-Hulk, again, I have no issue with you. I don't think you're wrong or a bad person or anything ridiculous. We should be able to watch something just for the sake of watching something. That's kind of the point, right? You watch it because you like it. I mean, we do it all the time with shows and movies that aren't part of a mega franchise, that are completely their own thing. We can still somehow enjoy a one-off movie that has nothing to do with any of these giant franchises these days. And thus, I'm not against the idea that something in the MCU can exist just to be entertaining in and of itself entirely, that we could have a sitcom-style show. But again, that's not what they did here. They didn't have the confidence in She-Hulk that it would be something that could completely stand on its own, and that a large number of MCU fans would actually want to watch it regardless of no interconnectivity. Instead, it is chocked full of cameos and so on. And the funny thing is that by making it connected, by, in a sense, telling people they have to or should have to watch this show because it furthers a larger plot or because this character will eventually show up, they are again getting people to really start to ask, do I need to watch all of this? Do I need to watch everything in the MCU? And what's the point of watching any of it if I'm not actually enjoying it for what it is anymore? And so it's almost starting to feel like what was once arguably the greatest strength of the MCU, what got so many people hooked on it in the first place, that interconnectivity that made them want to watch the next part because it was going to have relevance to the part they watched before and the part after, well, it's starting to become a weakness. It's starting to convince people not to watch any of it anymore. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think of She-Hulk, or if you find yourself caring more about the MCU these days, or maybe less about it. Whatever the case may be, you know what to do. Leave your comments below and let's talk some Marvel. And until next time, thanks for watching.